This is Ultimate General Civil War on Legendary Difficulty using the UI patch 1.8. Uh, you'll notice the second um, core commander is perked for speed. Makes sense. They have a really long way to go. It takes them forever to get there. Um, yeah, here are the career points. Uh, quick overview of the army, basically. I show all the units in detail uh, in the camp phase. So, reduced enemy size, reduced enemy weapons quality. He has Harper's Fairies, so I don't know if that did anything. Well, it probably does if you're playing on something other than Legendary. So, yeah, there we go. The numbers are about the same. Numbers are about even. So, this should be an ev uh, easy battle except most of my army comes in late and has a very long way to go. And he has 157 guns, and they are really good. Um, and they're going to target my artillery a lot of the time. So I've sped this up a little bit. And um, yeah, I'm going to use the bait them forward trick. I'm going to heavily weight the my right flank and really try to do some good work over on that flank we do in the first phase. This guy, the sniper on my left, the enemy right, his job is just to stay out of sight and take easy shots. I'm not trying to do anything clever. I don't have the extended range of the third perk. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of aware of the limitations. And what I want is to not... I want my snipers to just grind skill, get kills, and um, get their third perk, and not take any losses. That's pretty much it. So I want this guy to cross the river. So I put one of my units on run. Yeah, if he crosses that river, and, and just any time the enemy crosses the river at a at a crossing place and then there's not another crossing place anywhere else if you can get them to retreat on your side of the river you can corner them and kill them and that's exactly what we're going to do basically my 10 pounders are just grinding xp at this point i'm having them set back to draw the enemy forward and yeah we're just going to grind xp shooting at something. My sniper over there, um, I can actually, I'm about to find out, that I can fire him and not get detected. I can shoot at that infantry. And he can just sit there all day and grind XP. That's great. Yeah, I think I have this guy just about. I don't want him to like move north and get out of here. I want to push him south. Yeah, I see his artillery, but it's too far away. However, his artillery can uh, kill my sniper on the right side. So I want to come forward with my sniper on my right flank, but no more than I absolutely have to initially until some more infantry gets, gets there to protect him. Oh, and now he's going to go hidden. Okay. We're going to fix that. Move the sniper up. Now we see him. Lines of sight in this game are... Yeah, they're, they're something. Okay, and it's at this point I decide, well, maybe I can get some shots on the infantry without any penalty. As long as I stay hidden. And I do have the... I did take the stealth perk. Just for this purpose. And what happens is, both my snipers stay hidden, even when they fire. So okay, his unit is trapped on this side of the map, and I'm thinking there's a chance to get two units, if I can trap two units here, that would be beautiful. We are getting lots of easy kills, so I hope he just keeps attacking. Right. So, so far three units are engaged in this attack. I wish he would send 
like five, that would be splendid. Okay, we'll get my sniper busy grinding some XP. Yeah, my thought is, yeah, if this unit coming across now, he's coming across like he's charging. He's, he's all in. And I want him to cross and then retreat south. I know that's a long shot, but... And if we can get that, that would... Yeah, and here's something that I have to do constantly in this battle, is uh, get make sure my units are not blocking each other. That becomes a real problem. It's like the whole battle. I struggle with that for some reason. Then I'm thinking, oh, if I move my detached skirmisher just to the, you know, j just forward a bit, maybe he'll retreat south. Maybe I needed to take those other infantry units and have them back up and create a, a hole for him to retreat south and stay on this side of the river, but I wasn't able to to do that. Looks like he's coming forward with something, or I need to come forward with something. Oh yeah, I can get a shot on his artillery if I move up just a little bit. So we're going to do that. And you do get the message, a 10P moving to fire at the target. That's a uh, JNP innovation. If your units actually move to shoot at something, you'll get the, you'll get the message. That's, that's a really nifty thing. So keeping the two sniper units supplied is a bit of a challenge. Yep, again I get the message 10P is moving to fire. Not quite close enough. Okay, I really want my sniper to grind XP here. And um, yeah, so we're going to let the sniper and this one infantry, and they both do grind a ton of kills. I wish I had my um, Harper's Ferry 1. Harper's Ferry 1, I want to put him in the woods on the right side. Uh, the enemy right flank, my left flank as I come down here. And in the woods, I mean the observation post the enemy is occupying just to the right of the flag. Um, I'd have been better off putting Harper's Ferry... I, I am not thinking about um, maximizing experience and minimizing casualties with Harper's Ferry 1. Uh, and I need to start thinking in those terms. And instead, I'm thinking about where do I put him the most decisive part of the battlefield. And I have to stop thinking like that. So he takes a lot of losses here because I'm thinking in terms of doing harm to the enemy rather than getting the max XP for free, which is what I need to do. So, yeah. If I had to do it again, I would put Harper's Ferry 1, my best unit, that's going to get his third star. Um, I would put him over on my right flank, and he'd get a free thousand kills, and it would be beautiful. Yeah, if your sniper moves, yeah, you can't take shots on his artillery for free. So he's moved up a bunch of artillery. I would like to kill that one. Uh, killing his artillery that's in the woods is going to be a bit of a problem. Oh, this is great. We're going to kill Porter. Yep, Porter's dead.
Yeah, his artillery now is blasting away at my um, at my 10 pound parrots. Because we're more than, I think it's 700 units away, which is about half the distance, I'm guessing, of the something around half the distance of the his guns. He has he has 10 peas, but he might have a 20 pound parrot. I can't remember. Um, yeah, and his units can just sit back and inflict losses on my 10 Ps and my 24 howitzer. So yeah, my plan is I have a 24 pound howitzer. It's going to go into the woods on both my right and left here. And the six pounder is going to be right in the middle. And the idea is the enemy will target my six pounder, which, you know, if I lose a couple guns and there's six pounders, it doesn't really matter. So. Yeah, obviously we're getting an incredible kill ratio in the early part of this battle. We have 28 minutes, and I'm not sure that's enough to kill uh, the guy the guy that's in the woods trapped. But it turns out it is. But I, I end up bringing an infantry unit down to help out. Yeah, if you're playing along at home, I would definitely put my best unit here in the woods. Just an easy, more than a thousand kills for no losses. Definitely a sniper goes over there. Um, you should easily come out of here with, um, I don't know, close to 2,000 kills with that sniper. Yeah, after this phase, though, with uh, if you're putting your best unit over there, after you kill this unit, I would go ahead and walk the Harper's Ferry one out of these woods because there is not much for these infantry units over here to do for a while. Um, they just kind of sit quietly. The sniper has lots of good work that he can do, but the, um, the infantry detached skirmishers can get occasional flank shots on enemy that's on the hill, but... Your infantry isn't going to do very much. Yeah, now my plan this time, like I said, last time I had these guys just sit back and wait until my second corps got all the way to the to, this, to the south edge of the map and launched its attack at the bridge, at the river, um, in the enemy rear. Uh, this time, I want these guys to move forward and fight. And that's great, except for Harper's Ferry 1. Harper's Ferry 1 takes too many casualties. My goal is for him to be in the woods, but I keep pushing him and pushing him, and then I push him out of the woods. And Yeah, I'm just not thinking in terms of losses. I'm thinking in terms of kills. And I'm thinking, well, whatever losses he takes, I can just replace them. But at this battle, I changed my mind. Um, it's not that I want to baby the unit, but I want to keep him in good cover from now on and minimize casualties and maximize kills. So, okay, so these guys came in, and they take forever, because this is going to be a fight here. And... My first corps does a really good job of hurting the enemy. And off camera, I give everybody orders. And I'm going to use the high bob um, tactic of bringing, I think it's two divisions, down to attack that clump of woods and drive south. And then the other two divisions are going to walk all the way around and attack the bridge on the other side uh, and cross both bridges.
And really, the first core could have just kept driving these guys. As soon as the two divisions came up and started pushing on the enemy right flank here, on this side of the river, right where I'm attacking right now, as soon as that happened, um, as soon as they get here, I, I could have just kept pushing. Just everybody push to the south. Um, these guys can just steamroll. My, my best core can just steamroll over the enemy that's here, really. I mean, it just... When, when I finally do turn them loose, it's just... They, they basically walk as fast as they can walk forward over top of the enemy, and the enemy just just runs away in front of them. So we're going to hit this guy in this fortification with um, exploding shell from two batteries. The 24 howitzer needs to get into the woods. He just has just an incredible amount of artillery. Yeah, uh, this guy, uh, he has largely been resupplied. I pulled him out for a while, and now I'm going to get him. Look at that, 1,100 kills for my one infantry. So, yeah, I, I largely, almost completely resupplied this guy, but I have to get my ammo wagon back. I can't, like, he's good enough for right now. I'm a little torn on what to do with my other sniper. He's running out of ammo, and I definitely don't want him to get seen. So I end up doing the right thing, which is bringing him back to the center of my army where the ammo wagon is going, uh, resupplying him, and then redeploying him, and he gets a bunch of kills as soon as I do that. So the problem right now in that clump of woods is that my units are blocking each other and I have to keep checking these guys to make sure everybody can fire. Otherwise, they just stand there and take damage. So... Yeah, and I definitely would not attack... Yeah, I don't think I'd attack with Harper's Ferries in those woods at all. I think I would, um, I'd rather have Enfields in there. I'm just making sure everybody's firing. Yeah, and everybody is in firing. The, the, that unit blocked. It just hits beyond frustrating. I need everybody right now. This is like a crucial part of the battle, and I really need him to be firing. He's just standing there taking losses and being hammered with artillery. So I need to get the general up to give him some morale back. Yeah, that's just painful. I might as well put the 24 howitzers in canister range, but I have, I'm having them stay back just a little bit. Um, yeah, another unit blocked. So I, I go ahead and hit pause, check all my units again to make sure everybody's firing because I keep finding units that are not yet blocked. That's so... It's so irritating right here, and we have to deal with this, like, the whole game is dealing with units that are blocked. I guess I could have spread them out some more, but, you know, part of my strategy was kind of stack them up, concentrated fire to do exactly what I just did right there. Now, the moment this guy routes, his position is fairly busted, and my artillery, yeah, and I, once again, give orders, move forward a little bit. I uh, want to move to the edge of the woods on my right. And, yeah, we need to push this guy here out of the woods, and I'm taking a ton of artillery damage. So I'd rather had my 
um, Second Corps taking these losses rather than me. And if you look at the strategic map, my unit is Second Corps is walking around the uh, map headed south, and the units that are coming down to pitch in are, you know, they're not anywhere near close. It's going to be a while. So, yeah, my 10 pound parrots are firing at enemy batteries, and they're doing a good job. My infantry is doing okay, but taking losses. I knew that was going to happen, but I just need them all to fire. That... So here's the guy for my sniper to grind some XP against. So we're going to get him moving. Yeah, my sniper on my left flank is still hidden. You can see him over there as long as he's, you know, if he, I'm looking very closely to make sure he remains hidden, both my snipers. And yeah, they take no losses. So. Yeah, I'm going to punch this guy out of the woods. I don't want to get into melee with him because the, the artillery support is just awful. Um, and his his unit just stands there because he's in the woods. And also the command he has two officers right there. That that helps too. So yeah. That everyone else is just getting the tar kicked out of them, and I can see that that everyone's getting the tar kicked out of them, and. My artillery is being felt. His artillery is being felt, but my artillery is doing a good job too. But now, about now I'm looking, where is the rest of my army? Like, I need the rest of my army here now, and look how far behind they are. I mean, it's just, ah, uh, they're so far away. But it's okay. Actually, his, his army is being degraded, taking a bunch of kills. I have a couple units being hit pretty hard. But now we're going to take the woods. But now that I've punched a hole, and it's kind of a hole. Eh, kind of, sort of, a little bit of a hole. I have the woods. Um, he has three artillery over there. And that, I, I was kind of hoping they'd be more to the center. And the, the continued attack over there is the units that are still pretty far away. So, and, of course, my sniper's blocked. So I don't realize it right away. He's blocked, so he can't fire. So we'll get him freed up. But these Harper's Ferry units cannot, or these units that are in the woods, cannot come out of the woods. Yeah, and what's going to happen is... Um, his army is going to be pretty degraded. I decided to take one of my infantry units and um, it's on the other side of the river and go ahead and move him back across the river. Yeah, I, I now notice... It, yeah, this is just a real game the whole time, making sure guys aren't blocking each other. Get some shots on his artillery. Yeah, his artillery is just making me bleed to death over there. Yeah, my plan was to put really good units in, in the woods where he has all his artillery stacked up and that infantry would do great work. But, um, yeah, they, they took way too many casualties. And Harper's Ferry 1 should not be here. He's going to get... He's just going to take way too many losses. He just He's going to be an artillery magnet. He's going to do good work, but he's, he's going to take way too many losses. Where he could have gotten, as he could have gotten more kills than he gets for free, if I'd had him um, over in the woods in the first phase of the battle. So, lesson learned.
Yeah, I think he I think he loses over 700 men, which is just I could have I could have created with that a three-star cav unit, 750 men. Well, I mean, you're going to take some losses, but I don't think my guys in the woods on the far, my far right flank on the other side of the river, I don't, I don't think they took a hundred losses in that exercise and they killed an incredible number. So let's see. Yeah, one of them killed, I think, over a thousand. So yeah, he's pretty much falling apart. It's a good defensive position. Um, move the artillery up, move my infantry up. And once the attack happens, you know, these troops are coming in. You can see them coming in. And once they attack, yeah, I get my 24 pound howitzer out of there. He's just taking way too many losses. I'm going to put him, I think I put him behind the six pounder. So the sniper continues to grind up XP. That's perfect. Yeah, the other sniper needs to just take off and resupply. Yep, and I finally give him the order to just go ahead and go back to the supply wagon, load up, and we'll get ready for the next part of the battle. So the kill ratio has been really good to this point. The battle's gone extremely well. I could actually start pushing my detached skirmishers forward to um, engage the enemy on the right side. Just to keep engaging him. Uh, that's a tactic I like to do. Just detach the skirmishers, send them forward. But instead I just decide to wait. And these units that are coming down, they're almost into the battle. And I wanted these guys to get here on this flank about the time the guys hit the bridge. But... What happens is there's a division that gets to the first bridge sooner than the, you know, the there's another division comes in late and crosses at the crossing further south. So, and these guys get here before any of that happens. So, Yeah, there, there's a couple things at this point that the enemy can do. He can have everybody go left. Um, he can have everybody go north. And he can have a whole bunch of guys go south. Um, for me, the worst possible um, outcome is if he has a whole bunch of guys go south and to the right. And that's exactly what we have. I probably should have launched some attacks on his left flank to draw some of his army over that way. Um, even cross the river, my, my troops across the river to pretend they were making a crossing. That often gets him to move. Um, something to draw these guys away because my guys are going to end up having... So my infantry is now going to attack into a bunch of his artillery. Look, it's all stacked up on the right side where I don't want it. Um, and there's going to be a whole lot of stuff at both the bridge and the river crossing to the south. And I really don't want to drive him into the corner on the right side. I want to drive him out of that corner and then destroy him. So it's going to work, but it's going to be costly. Um, yeah, he, he's in just about the worst position. All of his artillery is on the right. I'm attacking right where his artillery is. Um, he's got a bunch of infantry over there. Yeah, I'm real happy that he moved one of his units forward so I can shoot it to pieces and hit it with artillery, but what I need to do is put more pressure on him on his left flank, which I could have done. Um, but I, I don't want to drive him south. At this point, I'm thinking I don't want to drive him south. In hindsight, I, I don't it doesn't matter. Go ahead and drive him south. Um, 
that's a I have a whole bunch of really good infantry right there with plenty of artillery support. We could have driven him south. It would have worked out fine. We would have uh, shot him to pieces. He would have been hit uh, both forward flanks, and then he would have been hit in the um, right rear flank. And yeah, it 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 would have, it would have worked out just fine. Yeah, these guys are a little bit better than green. I mean, they're not raw troops. They're a little bit better than raw, but not much better. They're going to come out of this battle, though, in really good shape, though. Really good stats. And the units on the right side of the map that are coming in, they're going to do really well. They're going to go up quite a bit. Yeah, I now have seven infantry, or eight, on my right, plus five across the river, and I'm facing three. So I could just move. I, I'm, I'm still thinking in terms of surrounding him, but really, I could have just pushed him into the corner. Again, the map seems like it's big, but it's not that big. And there's, as you're going to see, there's plenty of time. This is going to be over. Because last time I... I didn't even begin fighting until about um, 1600. Like, there was almost no fighting last time I did this till, till 1600. We've been fighting the whole time. Um, and I barely ended the battle on time. Well, you can wait several hours and still finish and wipe him out. I didn't get a complete wipe last time. Uh, we are going to get a wipe this time, though, so stay tuned, and you'll see that. And we're going to have plenty of time left over. Uh, this battle is going to end, and he's going to be done um, with a couple hours to spare. So that'll be the next episode. See you there.